Yo, I go front, man. And they, they listen, and they might think, yo, you know, they, they, they doing too much unique. But you Sugar Hill niggas, those Sugar Hill niggas was a different type of individuals because Sugar Hill had a different history. Mm -hmm. East Harlem was, it was, you no, know, we was in East Harlem, but we had the Italians and we had the Puerto Ricans. You know what I'm saying? Where I was at, definitely. I was in San Juan. Mm -hmm. Then you had. I see. Well, you, well, you just, you just intro my next guest. We got yeah. 10 toes down. That's Sugar Hill's finest right there. You know what I mean? So, we, you know, we reminiscing, man. You know what I mean? For K Slay about, you know, how he made us feel with the music and, you know, how he drove the era, you know, with Brucey B, Ron G, SNS, Kid Capri. You know what I mean? Do Wop. You know what I mean? We going all day. Buck Wow. You know what I mean? Come on, man. You know, we go all the way back. Big shout out to Rock and Wheel. You know what I mean? Mixtape. You know, how do you feel about that, though? What do you have to say as far as about K-Say's passing and just about the era, because this ain't to make it all sad. It's just to give a little history, reminisce, and make this, you know what I mean? Some, uh, what they call it, educational. <laughs> all right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Peace to the chat. Yo, yeah, um, K-Slay contributed a lot to the uh, culture, and uh, a lot of people followed in his footsteps, you know, um, even in the joint, even even while being in prison, you know, the Drama King, when he came on, everybody was up and ready to listen to the Drama King. We heard mm -hmm. them doors slamming and all that. The Drama King is in the building. You was ready. You was hyped. Like, yeah, Slay's in the building. All right, the but, door's uh, slamming. Yeah, yeah. So I go I go back. You know, I go all the way back. I go back. My, my, my favorite spot from back in the days was the rooftop. I was a rooftop kid every day, all day in the rooftop. That was my shit. And mm -hmm. uh, and he, you know what I'm saying, but um, yeah, man, definitely, man, he going he going uh, he he took a part of hip hop with him because a lot of people ain't gonna be to gonna be able to experience, you know what I'm saying, the 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 way he brought the culture to to a different a different level as far as he had rappers come together. You see this new joint that he the new joints that he was putting out, and the crazy part is two days ago, I was just in the studio. And I had some rappers laying some shit down, and I just was telling them, like, yo, listen, because K Slay gave me a beat, and he was like, yo, listen, I want you to do something with it with Sheik Looch. And, uh, and I just mm. was in the studio two days ago with the brothers laying it down. They all finished their verse, everybody laid it down, and then this right here happened. I'm like, damn, man. And I'm telling them, like, yo, listen, when K come out, you know what I'm saying, that uh, we're going to get the video together. But, you know, it's unfortunate that this had to happen. But at the same time, I'm sure that. K don't want no motherfucking body sobbing and talking yeah, on yeah, yeah, Exactly. That's the drama <laughs> king. That's the drama <laughs> king. Yeah, yeah the that. best part about it is this, man, that we all come from, you know, we come from poverty. We come from nothing. So to make it and to become somebody, he has made it because his name is going to live on. He's going to okay. be K Slate forever. He ain't going to be that kid from back in the days, you know, just writing on trains. He's not going to be remembered for that. He's going to have a legacy that he left behind opposed to a lot of brothers and sisters out there today, right, who dying and leaving this earth at a young age, uh, uh, leaving behind nothing, leaving not a legacy, leaving, you know, you know, the song Papa was a roller stone. Every lady's having, me, and when he died, he left us, was alone. That's all they father mm -hmm. leaving him, was alone. And, this, mm -hmm. and, and, and I just want to say to the people in the chat, people out there, period, man, that, you know, we got to prepare for that. Like, that's why I really don't get too sad at, at death, because we all got to reach that. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get prepared for that. And I believe that Slay was prepared. He had everything in order. He got his uh, he got his money in order. He got his uh, health insurance in order. His family's going to be able to prosper off everything that he left behind. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we got to get prepared for us as a people. And that's why I try to uh, make it imperative that we as black brothers and sisters, we come together. We come together on forums like this, not just for death, we gotta you know, after this we gotta exchange numbers. We gotta keep that contact. Yeah. We gotta keep coming together and keep building after this right here, man. It, it doesn't stop right here, man. This is just the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Right. As far as with you know, because I never been on the platform with that brother there, the other brother. I never been. I know unique, but we never been on the platform. We just yeah. build in and then from here we start getting another brother. Mm -hmm. We start building from here, man. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what it is, you know. Like I said, man. We on a positive movement, man. Y'all ain't see me bad mouth or bad mash or talk negative about anybody. You understand what I'm saying? I don't do that on my channel. I don't chase views. 
You know what I mean? If the young is watching, they want to learn something, they come over here and they learn something. You know what I mean? And I take the one that's learning something over the 100,000 that ain't learning nothing, that's just looking for something to gossip about. You understand what I'm saying? Because those are the ones that's lost. They just ain't realize it yet. You know what I mean? Just like when, you know, I was out there selling drugs. You know what I mean? I was lost. You understand what I'm saying? I, I mean, I think I'm doing good from where my mentality is at. So they think they're doing good now from where their mentality is at. You know what I mean? So until they ready to come out of that state, you know what I mean? All we could do is allow them. Yeah. That means allow them to be themselves. Yo, you, you understand what I'm saying? Fact. You know what's crazy unique? When I was, when, this had to have been like 85, right? And, and I began to see a transition in my hood when it came to how the drugs is playing out. Because before then, Andrew does. He said that water game, Stay away from the water. That, that was the that was the curse on the east side. That angel does shit, people go crazy. So nobody went to fuck with the PCP because that was like the major shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, like 85, 86, when the Mets won the World Series that year. Yeah. The game began to change. You had you had you had you had you you seen a lot of good dudes that was getting stuck two, three o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. But, but you know you you young you don't pay you ain't pay no mind to this shit that you you still thinking about what you see like the dope era the angel dust you don't know that this new shit is actually taking over bro and, and I ain't gonna front bro when when that shit first hit that shit fucked a lot of dudes up I mean you had a lot of dudes that was in position to get money because you gotta keep in mind again when it comes to people like K Slay and them they was going to art galleries selling their graffiti pieces. Mm. Rich white people that paid a hundred dollars for their shit. That's probably selling his shit tonight. That he died for a hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Because remember, he became an influence in hip hop. There's mm -hmm. people that bought the TAT crew shit at these art galleries that that caught them when they when they was at the weakest point. Some of them niggas like you're here come to the art gallery, get coked up, whatever the case may be. A, they, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before. Def Jam Records, you know what I'm saying? Before there mm -hmm. was a Def Jam, before there was a, a, a record label, mm -hmm. niggas was getting J Jerk, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. they had that one thing, the drug addiction. Here, take this cocaine. We give you a bunch of dope. We give you what you need to get over for you. Because people wasn't thinking consciously, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. when I began to see that the game changed, bro, it's, it's me and my friends, you was like, yo, son, we can't be like the mother niggas, bro. We just can't be like them. But we wind up being like them, not drugs, not for the drugs, but going to jail. Like, yo, we can't be mm -hmm. like them. But we began to commit, commit crimes. But we wanted to be like K Slate. But we seen the more um wild style and all that shit. Like, yo, we could be on TV. Remember, they was doing this out of love. They wasn't doing it to get a check. It just happened to come their way because of some liberals that worked for the village voice and other downtown entities, you know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. what took a like in the hip hop. It took, the, the, the people that took a like in the hip hop was it who y'all think, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Media wise, the only person, and I hate the fact that nobody talks about this, even Tenzo Down, we got to talk about this 10 tone. The first man to play hip hop, uh, the first official hip hop radio station, it wasn't that it was Mr. Magic, it was Mr. Sutton, the man who owned WBLS, an African-American, bro. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sutton allowed the first commercial hip-hop radio show, bro. You hear me? He, he the one that put that together. All right, it's a go. Let's do it. Let's take it from the fever. Let's bring that shit in the fever. Basically, he bought the fever, the WBLS, when he had the Mr. Magic Rap Attack. Am I lying? Nah, you right. You right. <laughs> he bought was that? Fever, Mr. Magic Rap Attack. Rap Attack. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then Molly Molly, you know, do everybody come on. Station, a black man. Mm -hmm. A black man owned it. Who owned WHBI? The same black man. Mm -hmm. So we did control our culture. The white man ain't always control our shit. We controlled our shit. We just didn't have the record labels. That's what we didn't have. Have we had one fuck Sugar Hill record? Have we had some shit like Universal or or an Epic Records that was, who knows where we would be at, bro? You hear me? It we wasn't none of those back then. It wasn't none of those back then. It was none of that. So Russell was all we had. 
Yeah, uh, all right, so let's go back. Ten toes. Tell me if you remember this, because you might be young. So I'm gonna hit you with this. Like this is a trivia for you. You know what I mean? Because I know they remember it. You remember when in '93 when I got locked up, they had not one hip hop station. I mean, hip hop um record label in New York, like hardcore gangster rap um record label. They had not one in New York when I got locked up. Mm -mm. A hip hop. Because they had. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ten toes. Go ahead. Nah, I don't remember no other uh hip hop joint. I already was locked up when when oh. when uh you started doing that joint. You know what I'm saying? And so I I already was on you, hip to you, and seen you before fucking Mecca Audio Club. <laughs> I was already on you before that. Like I was on him with the 300, with the MPV, and all that before all that shit. <laughs> First, no, wait, no, no, hold on. Have you said that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Have. See, I'm happy you said that. So, you come from the original era of when things began to change. See, I was, I'm 48, I'm pretty sure you're older than me, bro. You was outside when it went from JoJo Dancer to Red Tops, Blue Tops, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I found my first pack, fucking Red Top. I felt a bag bro. of Red Tops. And that's how with that shit like get out of here. You found I a found bag of red top. I found somebody's stash. It was it was a dude in my building, dude Marco. I that? found his stash, and I know what it was. I was like, the fuck is this? I went to my sister brother, and he was like, Yo, that's crack. We went down by a rich porter spot on 45th, and I was wow. out there hustling. And then Malcolm came out and he chased us away and said, like, yo, some little nigga out there hustling. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was selling crack, right? The crackheads was coming and they was doing a spot. They would come with the same color bottles with the soap and be like, yo, let me look at it. Look at it. And they were switching on me, putting the soap in my hand. <laughs> my I man, know. Oh, and I'm selling it. And they like, yo, some little nigga out there selling soap. I'm like, I ain't got no soap. This crack. But the crackheads was getting me. They was hitting me. Word. That's what got me into the game, man. But yeah. Bro, that's all. Unique Mega Audio, nah, I know that you was one of the originators, one of the first that was bringing it there, all up in the joint, they was telling me, yeah. Every time, listen, when it came to Unique, right, and it came to, when, when, you know, in prison, you have, like, them borough arguments, like yeah. dudes in Queens battling Brooklyn and mm -hmm. Harlem, whatever, and they be like, yo, yeah, y'all Harlem niggas was getting money, but y'all wasn't getting money, like so-and-so from Queens, yo, y'all wasn't getting money, and I used to always bring up Unique. And not too many people knew who he was. And I was like, yo, no, Unique. They was like, nah, who the fuck is that? That nigga wasn't getting money like Rich Porter and Alpo and them yeah. niggas. It's not like, what? Mm -hmm. Man, y'all niggas is funny, man. <laughs> you know who he is? Word up, man. And and uh, it wasn't until when you came out in the magazine and all that, they was like, yo, that's the dude you was talking about, the dude Unique. I was like, yeah, nigga, nigga from the hill. Nigga, some Sugar Hill shit. Fuck are you talking about? Yeah, man. So, I've been here. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing, is the beauty of it all is this. He came from one place and then look at him now. He was like really a, a, a threat and a danger to our community, right? When you really look at it, all of us. A yeah. danger to our community. Hey, look what we're doing now as far as trying to rebuild it and, and, and bring it back. And I bet all of those people, if the walls could talk, all them buildings could talk now, they have a story to say about all of us. Like, yo. Oh, type of crazy stuff and shit. Those those stars, stars, this day, day. Yeah. At 27, we'll say he be dead at this age, this and that. You know what I'm saying? Unique ain't even supposed to be here. He's supposed to still be in jail for the rest of his motherfucking life. And he made it out. And the you spirit know? spoke. Yeah, you know what I'm mm -hmm. And you can only get back because the ancestors have spoken. And you hear today. And we all hear today. And we able to give back and contribute. And uh, we're going to get resistance. We're going to get the negative. And, and yeah. we got to learn to accept that. You know why? Because we was the resistance back then when people was trying to mm -hmm. tell us to stop what we was doing so mm -hmm. you gotta accept that and expect that at the same time but positive bro. always come negative definitely definitely be definitely bro you know I, you know i watched unique transition to him becoming free again because i fought because we was on facebook so i'm watching yo did you get hang on front for, for, for a motherfucker in the feds with the rest of his life in jail Yo, you know Big D and, and, and Ten Toes Down. The nigga was posted like he was going home to Mars. So I'm like, yo, yo, I <laughs> oh, let me tell you. I talk to Big, I talk like the big Bro the damn near. I so talk to Big Bro day, every day, damn near every day on the phone. Every day. So one day he posted some shit, and I'm like, yo, this nigga free? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> he said some shit, I did I, I did I, and I'm going over here. So I'm like, yo, he got out that shit? And, 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 and I'm not going to lie to you, man. That shit made me cry a little bit, bro. Like, that nigga had the rest of his life 
The nigga was just, as long we was on we we was on Facebook for like ten years, bro. That nigga never showed a sign of weakness. Like he act like he was a street. Ever. He was he had nigga shoot a rap video and all type of shit. Yo, we got the rap video. We got this going on. We got that. <laughs> Yo, he called me. He called. He called me from the pen, and he told me. He said, "Yo, little bro, I need you to get everybody together. I'm coming home soon." So I went and got Ron G. You know what I mean? I put Ron on the phone with him. Ron did the beat. I went and got everybody to rap on the record, and we made it happen up in the Polo Grounds. Yo, son, mm -hmm. that was real. That you know. And that's why, and that's why I'm happy that we're here because we can we can do this more often. And Should I couldn't tell here. nobody he was coming home because he was like, "Yo, don't let nobody know." So I knew he was yeah. coming home, but I I kept it quiet. That's because you know I knew everybody counted me out. You already know what it is. Ten toes, you know what that's like when they count us out after yeah. two decades. Yo, son, you you you, yeah. you 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 beat the odds, bro. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Just just growing up under you. Remember, you're older than me. Growing up under y'all and to see that y'all niggas is still sane, you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm good at I'm, I'm in a good place. Like he said, we do got a good message to, to tell. Like yo, we was young, mm -hmm. and, and and when you grow up poor, you make poor decisions. But mm -hmm. as we got older, we began to make wiser decisions. Who would have thought that a generation above us would have created something that we can make money off of to talk about hip hop? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought with Money Mel, Crash, Cool, and the rest of these niggas, and Disco, Danny, and Star Child, and the rest of these other niggas is doing, when they gave us an opportunity to speak about this culture that we come from? Because I believe it, believe it or not, when I was younger, we, 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 we thought we was hip hop. There wasn't mm -hmm. a, yo, who the best rapper? The best rapper was on my block. We didn't care about LL Cool J. We cared about the nigga who could rap on the block. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like and then the radio started popping, and, and that, and that, that was like, yo, this shit is serious now. Maybe I need to learn how to hey, yo, it. Hold on, hey, yo, spit. Hit the link in in the bottom in, in the comments and come in. That's Stan Spit. Yeah, you know I mean, we just did a record oh, together, baby, beat bro. him, Groff Davies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Charlie. Yeah. You know what I mean? We did, we did, a, we did a joint together, man. Spit. Hit the link in the thing and come in. You know, but um, where I'm at is. What do y'all think about this the subway shooter and what's going on? And is, is the train safe to you? There's always a Ricky Ricardo, bro. There's always, you know what, you know what? There's always a Ricky Ricardo. Um, we get them every 20 years. We always get the one that like the Colin Ferguson guy, what is it with Colin? Oh, it's Ferguson nigga that mm -hmm. trained up in Long Island. We get them. But the weird part about his actions is wherever he was going through. See what happens is mental health is serious in New York, right? And we see that every day we go we, we, we when we walk the streets. But African Americans, for some reason, we don't get the help that we need or the service. Police are ride by somebody who's in the middle of the street talking to themselves until they do something stupid. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he had mental health issues, and nobody must have cared until he finally flipped out. Yo, you just don't wake up in the morning and go, I'm gonna put a mask on and shoot some shit up and throw a gas bomb in there. You know what I'm saying? So now what happens now is why is it when it comes to our culture, you have to that I, I see in St. Louis, bro. Here in St. Louis, I see a bunch of crazies walking around talking to themselves with guns. They got guns on them. Never seen they going, y'all don't fuck with them until they shoot somebody's head off. Then they go, Oh, we got mental health issues. So why the fuck don't y'all solve the mental health issues? And to, but you're way to commit a crime. So that's the that that it's crazy, bro. Just the other day, somebody shot somebody head off. And they said the guy who did it got mental health issues. Yo, he was crazy. He was off his meds, and he shot guy. He shot homeboy in the subway station. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm sure he showed plenty of signs of all that. You know, <laughs> you know what, what I'm saying? saying? You know what I'm saying? They show signs, bro. And nobody just paid attention to it. What you think well, about the subway? Uh, crazy, uh, bro. Uh, I'm I, trying to make they, it... I think that they pay attention to it, right? But they just don't care. So even with like the prison system, right? In prison, the mental health, they, they you really don't get the help that you need within the prison system. So you got a lot of people that's mental that let's say the first time he does something crazy, nothing real violent, but just something stupid. He go to prison, 
all they're going to do is medicate him up. That's the answer to everything. There's no psychiatric mm-hmm. help. There's no sitting down, no try to figure out. They just say he suffers from schizophrenia and he hears voices. The medication, it just slows him down. But when he get out, he doesn't have any type of outlets that's going to help him when he get out. And then next thing you know, he stopped taking his meds. So no one is really watching him and seeing what he's doing. So before you know it, he's starting to hear voices again. And now these voices is telling him to kill people. And now you got a man who's out there pushing people in front of the train, shooting people and going all kind of crazy. And you're like, damn, what the hell happened? This is what happened. You let him go up out of prison when he wasn't supposed to be in prison in the first place. He's supposed to be in a psychiatric ward and getting some type of mental health, psychiatric uh, 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 um, from a psychologist and a psychiatrist. And they were supposed to have been challenging him and helping him rather than medicating him up and seeing what the real issues was with him. So now, today, we got a man on the subway shooting people, in which I believe that he was a uh, military. I'm not sure, but that's what I believe. And uh, I think that his moves were strategic. He has mental health issues, and he's going to ride with that. But I think that his uh, actions were strategic. He knew what he was doing. And, and when, you, when, when it comes to uh, people that's really crazy, psychotic or something, they see every day killing or violence as normal like you getting up putting your pants on brushing your teeth that's normal for you but for them violence and doing crazy shit like that is normal them they don't see nothing wrong with it and they need the help and hopefully this will uh uh send a big message out to society that you can be the next victim you can be the next one because it has set an alarm not only for the people that was on the train but to society, period. And the same thing in which we were doing, we were mental at one time. We suffered from, uh, 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 you know, the peer pressures in our communities and stuff like that. You got to be mental. We was desensitized. We dehumanized people. We had to be mentally ill in order to do the things we did. In order to put drugs in people's hands and see an effect that it had and how it made people rob and steal, how we were able to pick up guns and kill people. That's a mental illness. That's a sickness in order to be able to do that. And we was desensitized and we dehumanized and that's what our problems were. And in and, and the help, it is possible. We can get the help because you can see it in me. You can see it in Unique. You can see it in all the other brothers who, you know, on a different scale of mental illness that we got the help. These brothers here, they on another uh, level of mental illness. They can get the help. It's just that we got to uh, keep track of them on a medication, making sure that we have uh, uh, social workers and everybody on point. Uh, to unite them all. That was a good build he was having. Yeah, but definitely, man. Like, but but I've that, and I look at it like we all mental. Unique has had mental health issues. I did. All of us. If anybody's all able to hurt somebody. No, by, <laughs> bottom line, bottom you know, line, family, you don't bend the time. All of us been, been done did time. You already know that once they put you in there, it's like, you know, survival mode. You don't know what to expect, but whatever it is, you know that now this is everything that everybody that grew up in your neighborhood, your culture, your environment, your household, this is what everybody taught you. And you tap into it as different circumstances come from every step that we take, walking deeper and deeper into the bliss, into the prison. You know what I mean? Some mm-hmm. people just keep walking with blinders on, and those are the ones that wind up catching a new charge and never getting out because they don't kill somebody over a cup of soup. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, we got that all day. And they'll tell you that they did it because it was right. the principle of the thing. How many times we heard that word? The principle of the thing. You do something stupid and you bring it, you blame it on principles. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, you yeah. stabbed the dude over a cup of soups. Now you never going home. He dead. And you telling me it was the principle of the thing. And you're comfortable going to bed with that at night for the rest yeah. of your life when you came in with three years. I, yeah. I, I, I yeah. met brothers like that. I've seen that a lot in there. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, yeah. you tell me. You know? I seen the dude turn a five year bid into twenty five. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. so oh, you yeah. know, just trying to keep it where it's at, man. Um. Nah.
Cheers, cheers, cheers. The crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. Shot the can of 26 yeah. He back on the strip uh-huh. Getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift Trust. You stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in home uh. He cut from the bottom back. Came up from the bottom back. Drop the book, you should go and get it An Instagram page and a YouTube You could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin uh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh-huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid Talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Get, get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. What? Spin a couple bands on the dapper dead. Uh. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Glenn. No cap, Glenn. it's a roaring uptown. Yeah. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust downs. Word. Now we on the positive. Word. You we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying yes. to stop the kids from being an operative. Uh. So take uh. heed, homie Linda Ed. Uh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uh. Town, but now town. it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars It's nope. about buying property to make the community yard So we can get back to the youth them Cause they the truth them And bless up to all the rude men yeah.